Hi, this is Mark News from Plant Talk Radio. Thanks for subscribing and listening to our podcast, Your Gardening Questions from Plant Talk Radio. To keep this podcast free, we're partnering with Stoke Seeds. Indoor seed starting is fun, easy, and economical. Now's the time to start your seeds. If you're looking to grow vegetable variety or add a punch of color to your flower garden, review the Stoke Seeds Starting Guide online. You'll find information about soil preparation, moisture, temperature, light, transplanting, and more. The Stoke Seeds website is a complete resource center you need to make your garden the envy of the neighborhood. Get growing with Stokes. Now, today's question. Plan Talk Radio is brought to you by Stoke Seeds. Subscribe to their free e-newsletter at stokeseeds.com. Now, back to Plant Talk. And uh, thanks for coming back to the program with us. Mark News here alongside Fred Howard, the Ohio nurseryman. And it's great to hear from Bob again. Now we, I think Bob has been uh, one of our callers previously and uh, had some good, great questions. And we had an email this week. Uh, Fred at planttalkradio.com is the email address, or you can just go to our website, planttalkradio.com, and click on the Ask Fred button. And this one came from Heather, and she says, Last year we bought an older home, which has mature trees that keep the backyard shady for much of the day. Now, we have a spot where a small to medium-sized tree would be perfect. Can you suggest any trees that would do well in mostly shade? Okay. Well, there are several answers to that. Um and there are probably some that I won't even mention, but the first thing that I think of under those circumstances is service berry. There are several different service berries. Uh, there is a low shrub that she won't want. It's a beautiful stream bank thing, but then she's going to want it into the service berry trees. And I'm not going to go into the technicalities, but you can buy them as a single trunk tree or as a multi-stem tree. And just remember the name Serviceberry. Uh, they, their technical name is Amelanchia, A-M-E-L-A-N-C-H-I-E-R. And then you're going to pick one that has the growth habit that they'll explain to you and so on. Uh, wonderful flowers, wonderful berries, and they are also called Juneberry, so they fruit very early. Birds love them and are an attraction. And then they are a dozen... Des, anyhow, denizen is what I'm trying to say of the shady areas of the woods in Ohio. So they're they're a native. The next native would be the pawpaw. Um, it's usually in a spot that's well drained but still moist. Uh, the bottom of a hill that they're they're not quite in the valley yet. Uh, they are a very crooked, gnarly tree as a denizen of the understory coming up from seed being eaten by whatever and bumped by whatever. But then if you put them out in the sun or a sunnier place, they're quite a well-formed conical tree. Um, you can, in using pawpaw, if you do, uh, they do fruit. I happen to be very charmed by the flavor of the fruit, much like a banana, but still different. Uh, get two different trees. Uh, hopefully they'll be from two different seeds. And um, they they need to cross pollinate is what it boils down to. Then we have red bud, pretty good in sun and shade. Uh, I've seen them in relatively dense shade. the uh, The next step would be over into an evergreen, the American holly. If you're in an area where uh, you can either acidify the soil or it runs a little bit on the acid side with some protection, which the older trees would do, American holly can do it. Then we come into American hornbeam, European beech, sugar maples, well, that would make a good size tree, staghorn sumac, which is a, I don't know, 10, 10 12 footer, uh, Buckeye, <laughs> our state tree, the worthless, hairless nut, but at the same time, it's wonderful in a shady spot. And then um, the witch hazel is another of my favorites. I have the one that I speak of at my birthday time that's a fall bloomer, roughly in the middle of October. And then I have one in the backyard against the fence, kind of a spalliate against the fence that is in bloom right now and in full bloom uh, and many new cultivars of it. Uh, Again, a uniform tree, if you wish, but uh, it can also be kind of wild and gangly, and I'm making mine that way. Uh, if it gets out more than 12 inches from the fence, uh, it gets cut off. <laughs> and if yeah. it runs along the plane of the fence, it's left on. And it's starting to take on some character. It's six foot by 
six foot tall right now by maybe eight foot wide and and quite remarkable this time of year. So those are trees that would be, oh, and the dogwoods, uh, the, the plain flowering dogwood. And then there are various family members. Uh, the one I happen to like that works well in the shade is Cornelian cherry dogwood. And, um, and other cultivars are the same. So hopefully that list will give you some help. Lots of choices. Lots of choices. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. Remember, lose the winter blues and garden indoors. Start your indoor seating with the help of Stokes Gardening Guide, plus their online articles. For the best selection of vegetable, flower, and herb seeds available, go to stokeseeds.com. Catalogs are still available. Cultivating successful growers for generations.